Hello. Hello, viewer. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. In the words of that highly credible indie rock god, Chesney Hawks, we are the two and only. You can't take that away from us. We are Phil and Ben. Did you just say we're like Chesney Hawks? No, I said in the words of Chesney Hawks. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd establish our musical, artistic musical credibility right at the start of the show to make sure that we retain all the most tasteful viewers and listeners. Well, yeah, there is that, I suppose. <laughs> or Chesney Hawks this fans. Wasn't your sister a Chesney Hawks fan? I'm sure she was. I think she had a photo. I think she had a photo taken with him back in the day. Yes, she did. See, I'm sure she see, did. Not, um, see, not all yeah. photos with um, pe- uh, pop stars and that from the eighties and nineties. Is that bad a thing? That's not going to come back to haunt anyone. So. No, exactly. So we are in 1992, folks. Yes, indeed. That year of... Yes, the fourth, we are. The fourth third. No, what am I talking about? It's the third year of the 90s. It is the third year of the 90s, yes. Midway just... through the third month of the year, which is why we're in the third year of the 90s. This month we are listening to albums from 1992. We are. In order to pick our three individual favourite albums of the year at the end of the month. Yes. And I'm some of us have through, got I'm, ideas I'm in our going, heads already. Sorry, Bernie. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry I was going to say, I'm just go, if, if people are wondering what I'm looking at, I am just going through what I have listened to this week. I've listened to three or four albums this week, but you carry on, Phil. I'm, I didn't want people to think I was looking at internet pornography. I'm sure you weren't, Ben. Well, not when you've I'm got me like on your screen. like an MP. You, why would you need to when you've got me on your screen there? Now, I know, um, I know. I'm glad you so, can't see me below this, because I am aroused. I was having a conversation about this the other day with one of our viewers who... Um, about Pornhub. <laughs> about... Um, 1992. Oh, right. There was no Pornhub in 1992, We were remembering the albums that he had in 92, and he was predicting what one of mine... He was predicting what one of mine would be for 94, but that's a couple of months away, so let's not go into that. I bet you know what one of mine's going to be for 1994 as well. Well, you see, that's an album... Well, there's one album from 1994 that would probably make my top three, but I don't need to put it in my top three because... I'm going to put it in mine. You couldn't take the risk that I might not have put it in mind. So I'm calling your bluff on, on a few albums from the 90s that I'm yeah, just not sure, going to put yeah. in my top three because I know that I know where they're going to end up. So, yes. Um, but anyway, 1992, when your favourite band was still called The Rain, or did they even exist at that point? I'm no, no, they were sure. called Oasis by 92. Oh, well, they were called Oasis in 92. They were, yeah. I think they changed and. Um, I think they changed from The Rain and was it 91? I think Liam Gallagher joined. Okay, but no recordings in 92, apart from maybe some cassettes or something. So no actual yeah. records. So what no. recordings that came out in 92 have you been sampling again? Well, this uh, this week, I'm just going through my list. The first one, obviously I listened last week to um, Tori Amos, etc. But I listened to Generation Terrorists by um, Manic Street Preachers, which I found a little bit slayer. It, it it was a little bit sort of almost big hair American that sort of feel to I, Generation Terrorists. Apart do, from yeah. motorcycle emptiness, but it had a Slayer feel to it. If that well, makes, I do remember when the Manix first came out, and you know, I, I I wasn't really tuned into them at the time. I remember there was a lot of coverage of them in the music press and i seem to remember maybe viewers can correct me if i've got this wrong but i seem to remember that in the music press like nme and melody maker that it wasn't all praise for them it wasn't like when suede came along where the music press were all throwing them falling over themselves to praise them i I seem to remember that there was a bit of a mixed view on the manics early on and i think that uh yeah it was when i heard some of it i do think it was similar to American hard rock, you know, that yeah, kind of yeah. thing. I, I had it on in the gym, because you know me, I like to listen to stuff in the gym that isn't for listening in the gym. And, um, yeah, when I had it on, I was like, the first thing that came into my head, now I've not listened to any Slayer. I'd probably, if you played me a song, one of their big hits, I'd go, oh, yeah, that's Slayer. So when I say they sounded like Slayer, I am taking a shot in the dark 
because that's the fit. But that's I what I think, imagine it sounds like. I don't think that's what Slayer sounds like. I think it's more, no. but I think it's more sort of, yeah, they were more towards hard rock. I would want to say, you know, almost, you know, more towards Guns and Roses and that kind of thing. There was I an element of say, that, I felt. I think, yeah, I think there's elements of Guns and Roses, but I, I thought there was a big element of sort of like 80s, big hair sort of well, rock. Well, maybe. Not, not Bon Jovi, but you know the bands were probably slightly harder than Bon Jovi. I'm yeah. not saying Bon Jovi aren't hard. I mean, <laughs> he might he might be able to smash your face in, you know. But, I know what um, you mean. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah that sort of – it's hard to pinpoint what sort of um, – those yeah. sorts of bands. Motley Crue, yeah, yeah. Skid Row. I don't know, I'm trying to think of some American bands that were yeah, hard. Yeah, maybe. It just time. sounded like big hair metal, if you know what I mean. That's there was of... an element of that I thought about it. Yeah, I, well, some of the tracks I had. But I maybe, right, I've not heard that album in a very long time. So No, I, I've maybe, got to um... say, I know it's the most commercial song on there, but I do love Motorcycle Emptiness. There's something about that song that is very relevant. I think it just... It hasn't aged that song. A lot of the stuff on there, I did feel obviously because I thought it was an album from the eighties. Um, it has, yeah, slightly aged some of it. Um, I don't think it's as good an album as uh, Everything Must Go. I think Everything Must Go is probably more commercial and probably moved more into the indie sort of indie bracket. Um, but yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't. It's not going to challenge my top three. To be fair, 1992 is proving to be a bit of a difficult year for me. Yeah. There's nothing that's really standing out at the moment from 1992. I know what you because, mean. Because I know you're going to choose R.E.M. And I did like that. And I did like Tori Amos. But they're not kind of going, ooh, have me. I've got another album. That, I've got an album that you might like. It's not very long. It's only it's only about thirty seven minutes long, I think. Something. So, is it the first three it, tracks of "Be Here Now"? No, it, it's um, it's another. It's a singer songwriter, but it's a, a bit of an experimental one. It's Suzanne Vega. Oh yes, it's yeah. called. I think I may have put this album up on the. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe did I have this in our women albums? thing we did the albums by women women albums um yeah women's albums or female albums whatever we called it um, is it the one that i've got i want i've got a it's got an orange there. front cover it's many orange oh, front no, cover i've got that one um i think you've got an lp you've got the lp of her first album you showed oh, that yes, the other yes. week yeah 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 i have yeah but this is it's when only, she went only one i've got as well now this is when she was produced by elvis costello's producer mitchell Froom, whom she then briefly married, I think. But um, yeah. some of Elvis Costello's band play on this album. But there's also a little element of, I don't know how you could describe it, slightly industrial techno, not not heavy industrial techno, but just used in a slightly artful kind of way on some of the songs. Some of the songs are straight singer-songwriter stuff with acoustic guitar. and but They're all quite short songs. There's nothing, nothing over long. And it's quite melodic. And... A little bit quirky, but not ridiculously whacked out quirky. Like and Tori Amos quirky. Not that quirky, no. no. But Suzanne Vega's got her own style, hasn't she? She's got her own vocal style, that sort of slightly breathy, slightly, I want to say detached. What, like she's, I do when I ring people up? She's Hello. one of those singers that's she's kind of very good at doing these sort of observational songs, isn't she? That sort of thing what, she there's does. There's a carrot on the sideboard, yeah. I'm going to pick it up. Yeah, there's loads chop of songs it, about chop carrots it, chop on it. it yeah, there's oh, loads of songs about carrots on it and aubergines and things. Yeah, so you might I, enjoy it. Do you know what I think, Phil? Yeah, I think me and you. I think it wouldn't take us long to learn to play the claves and the glockenspiel. Why don't we like invent our own genre of music, like ve vegetable based music, veg well, veg rock? Well, one of your passive bands funk <sighs> veg. Well, one of your bands of the 60s that you keep on not wanting to listen to. Do you remember that very, you know, very famous American band from the 60s that Paul McCartney loves and you can't be bothered to listen to? Do you remember them? Yeah. Oh, um, Dave Clark Five. Yeah. On the Beach Boys album, I think it's on Smiley Smile. It was part of the original Smile Sessions, a song called Vegetables. Really? On which Paul, Paul McCartney allegedly appears crunching a carrot. 
Um, but it is a song about vegetables, so it's kind of been done, kind of been done before. So did they include you know, all vegetables? I'm thinking of mainly going for root vegetables. Um, they definitely did have some root Parsnip vegetables Paradise, in there. Paradise. I'm thinking of that's a good song title. But in the song, um, they ask their listeners to write in with the name of their favourite vegetable. The Swede Sunset. There's another one. Uh, turnip. T- um, turnip. Tupolola. Tupo, t- <laughs> turnip Tupperware. There's a great song title. I'll leave you to work on that yeah. genre on yeah, your own. Yeah. Just you know, when, yeah, when you're yeah. locked in a locked in a room, when you're locked back in your room in the dark, prog you, you veg, work on the vegetable. veg rock. I don't know. Yeah, you work on that then. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'll, so, I'll update you next week with my. I'm just trying to think of yeah, other albums from 90, 92 that you would like. Um, well, do you, want you... To, do, do you want me to tell what else I've listened to? Yeah, what else have we got on? Uh, I did listen to um, Slanted and Enchanted by Pavement, which wasn't bad. Um, right, yeah, I've never listened to it, you know. Well, I, I, I thought I'd go for a bit of Pavement, because I've not really listened to much Pavement. I've walked on a lot. Um, never really listened to them, because yeah, last time I tried it, yeah, last time I tried it, um, I got moved on by the police. So... Um, it wasn't bad. It's it's difficult for me to get into it. I, it just because it doesn't. I don't know. There's just something about it. it doesn't. It, did it have? It, do you know what it, have, it reminds me of? Did it have gaps in between the tracks? Yes. The pavement it had cracks in between the tracks. Cracks and moss growing through it. It, yeah. it reminded me a little bit of the, not in sound or anything, but the. Um, uh, Tran- Tranquility Base Hotel, the Arctic Monkeys album, where there's not a, s- a track that stands out on it. So it's not a singles album. It's an a- So then you start thinking, is the album just really, really good, every single track? Or is the album average because not one track stands out? If you know what I mean, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So it's it because there's not that standout track. I've, I think I've said before because there's not that track to sort of hook you in with. It's kind of like you're always waiting for that. You know, you need something in an album that makes you think, "Yeah, this is." You know, I love this album. You know, but yeah, it was just what it, it was on. And to me, that doesn't. It, you know, musically very good. I enjoyed the lyrics and stuff, but. It, and I know it's very highly praised, but there was nothing in it that went, I love you a lot. So Ben's still plodding along with pavement, but you never know, you might uh, yeah. so you might embrace it I, in the future. I might embrace it in the future. Um, I then went on to an artist, because I thought, well, I'm going to go left field here. And I have no idea where they're from. They are from, hold on, they are from Argentina. They're an Argentinian band called Soda Stereo. And I listened to their 99... Because I thought, I don't want to just listen to the mainstream albums. I want to listen to something a little bit different. And it was their album Dynamo. And obviously, it was all in Spanish. Spanish. They speak Spanish, yeah. So I didn't have a clue what... It was a. It, it was It was okay. I just didn't have a clue what they were saying. Um, but that wasn't a bad album, sort of. I don't know what the best way to describe it is. Was it pop, electro pop, I suppose? So, but I'm looking on Spotify. They have 10.9 million monthly listeners. So it's a, um, but yeah, I'd say a pop rock sort of, yeah. It won't get into my top three though, but I thought I'd try, you know, because the whole thing of this is to try different albums. And then I followed that up with what can only be described as a definite, I think, for my top three. And that's Bizarre Ride to the Far Side by the Far Side. I've never taken that ride, I have to say. Well, it's about time you uh, got your little app on your phone and got a Far Side Uber, or whatever, uh, a for Uber, Fuba? Fuba. Anyway, you need to get on it, Phil. It was a very good album, very, and and I have been hip hop heavy, but I think. Oh, go on. 
I think I think there is a big oh, shout is... out to I think oh, they were hip hop, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. Hip hop was in a very good place in the early nineties. So I think that's why I've enjoyed it. Because like the what was the other ones I'd listened to? Um De La Soul, The Chronic. They Tribe don't called Quest. Tribe called Quest. They don't sound dated. And Bizarre Ride to the Far Side does not sound dated. It's how hip hop should be. So, I need to have a listen to the Dr. Dre one. Oh, guess what I got this week? Now we're talking about hip hop. Hold on one second. It's quite relevant we're holding because on. I think Folks, it you, is an are you early on? 90s version. I'm holding on. I don't know if you could hear me say that. I'm not. Let me put the. But. You know I'm a 45-year-old child. Well, this week, to add to my music collection, I got a little, I got a little Snoop Dogg, early 90s Snoop. Uh, do you know, if he, if he had a, a, a paler um, tone of skin, I thought at first he was George Michael. But it could have been, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, uh, yeah, I can say that. I mean, Funko Pops aren't... Physically accurate. I mean, no, um, I'm not sure that Snoop's head is quite that wide. In fact, I no. think of, I think of Snoop Dogg as having quite a thin face. Thin face, yeah, yeah. So he's this is of, early nineties uh, Snoop. So he's he's got a thin face like a dog, isn't that, isn't that why is that why he's called Snoop? I've just thought that his face is quite thin, isn't it? Thin, yeah. Is that yeah. why they call him Snoop Dogg because he looks like a dog? Is that why he was called that? I never, I I've never what, even thought of that before. What, let's only... have a look. Why it's got to be something like that? Why is Snoop Dogg called Snoop Dogg? Here we go. For the reason why he's called. Here where we, we ask all the most important questions about music and answer them for you as well. Sorry, Ben, do go ahead. Don't don't delay on telling us about Snoop Dogg. I'm sensing a little bit of sarcasm there, Phil Stuff. I know. Like I mean, you I, don't I'm want desperate to know. To, I'm desperate to know why he's called Snoop Dogg. Um, the reason he's called Snoop Dogg is because his mother nicknamed him after a character called Snoopy from the Peanuts cartoon. Is that it? Is that... Really? Yeah. So his, it came from his mum. It came from his mum. And because his real name is uh, Calvin Cordoza Broadus Jr. Okay, his, I vaguely his, know bro- that now you say that, yeah. He, his brother's got a, um, a really cool name. His brother's called Bing Worthington. So obviously his other brothers, Google and Yahoo Worthington, were um, so... Uh, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that's why he's called Snoop. It says nothing exciting or, you know, just wasted no. two minutes, haven't we? Just uh... <laughs> Really, we have, but there you go. We usually so, waste 20, so not well, too yeah, bad. Of people's time. So, yeah, no, Bizarre Ride to the Far Side was very good. Um, so, yeah, I've got another week of... Li- I have listened to others, but I've got one or two tracks in them, like, this isn't doing it for me. There's no point in me carrying on. You're not going to get into my top three. So why should I bother? In the end... Fair enough. Do you want to know something sad that I did this week? I know we're talking about 1992, but this is this is nothing to do with 1992, unless he was born in 1992. Let me just find that out, because then this could segue into what I've just said. Um, I don't think he would be. I think he's going to be too old. When was he born? He was born in... Ah, oh, he's born in 1991. <laughs> really? He was, born, he was born on the 24th of December, 1991. That's so almost 1990. Almost, that is... Yeah, who, who is it? Um, Louis Tomlinson from uh, One Direction. Uh, I was listening to a interview with Noel Gallagher the other day, and he said his new kitchen was paid for by a song by Louis Tomlinson. I think you can see it there. <laughs> Called I've, Walls. Do you know I've never actually heard of Louis Tomlinson? I've only ever heard not? of Harry Styles. If if you yeah. said to me who is Harry Tomlinson, what's he famous for? I would think Bread. It's it's someone I've never heard of, so he must be a footballer. And I oh, would have yeah. said he was a footballer. Um I no, he's he, obviously not. 
Yeah, no. So that sounds he, um, like a footballer, though, doesn't it? It, it could be a footballer. Hmm. But if you listen to the track walls, and if anybody, it's the chorus when it starts off, it's quite similar to Acquiesce. So there's, right. there's nothing else in the song that is like Acquiesce by Oasis. But Noel Gallagher got, got a 40 got 40 percent of the writing credit on it just for this one section what this what the um what the opening riff or something if, or if the... you listen to it you're it's it, it's it's the chorus basically when it goes into the chorus the the first bit of it sounds very similar to right. acquiesce you know that because we need each other that bit there oh, yeah that bit yeah 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 nothing to do with 1992 it's just something i heard and That's... i thought i'd just mention it it's rather ironic that Noel Gallagher has got some money because somebody nicked a bit of his song. Yeah, well, well, according to the interview, he never asked for it. They actually approached him and okay. said, "We're giving you, you a forty. Yeah, yeah, we're giving you a writing credit." And he was like, oh, "Pay for a new kitchen." So nothing doing ninety ninety two. So um, now the big question is, Phil, and I asked this last week, and you let me down, is. Have you listened to anything from '92? Yeah, yeah, I've listened to the Black Crows, the Southern Harmony and Musical Companion. It is good. I was trying to decide whether I like Chris Robinson, the singer, or not. Mrs. Robinson's is, lad. Yeah, the thing is, he's there's nothing wrong with him. He's a good rock singer. He's got he's one got that sort of slightly, slightly gravelly um, voice. But I don't know what it is. Why don't I like him? As I think maybe it's just because there's, I don't know, maybe he hasn't quite got the kind of charisma that I like in a singer. Because, yeah. you know, let's say, for example, Mick Jagger. I yeah. could listen to Mick Jagger for hours. I mean, I never get bored of Mick Jagger. I mean, I just yeah, never, yeah. ever, I've never got bored of Mick Jagger. I'm always entertained by him. And yet Chris Robinson of the Black Crows, after a while, I'm sort of, I've heard enough of him, if you know what I mean. But he's good at it. And some people think he's one of the best ever you know, rock singers. There are people who say he's the, one of the great American rock singers but of his generation. But it's quite a, it's a good album. I mean, it's, it's sort of stonesy faces, you know, that sort of 70s bluesy rock. I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring him. Sorry, I forgot who that is. Oh, it's Snoop Dogg. It also, that looks more like, um, I don't know, Phil Lynott from Thin Lizzy or one of the members of a 70s soul group. Like, um, I don't know which group, but... Phil Lynott, he died quite early. Wasn't he from Belfast? Wasn't he, wasn't he Irish he was, or something? He was from Belfast, yeah, from Northern yeah. Ireland, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a member of the Four Tops or something. It just doesn't make me think of Snoop Dogg. It makes me think. It doesn't. Of... It doesn't. It needs to have the. They um, need to make his face thinner. They need to make his face thinner, and they need to give him some some other prop or something to make him look more like. What's he wearing? Um, chinos, yeah. pair of Converse, and a shirt. Should he be wearing like a tracksuit thing? Um, I tell you what, if, if, I, one I, second. if I think of Snoop Dogg, I think of him wearing a tracksuit, but maybe that's not what he With normally a cane. wears. Uh, well, yeah, I hadn't thought of the cane. I was thinking of early yeah. Snoop Dogg. See, look, you can look, look, you can get that one. There's a Snoop. Well, maybe that's more like it, but it's still, still, that still looks more like other people than Snoop Dogg. I mean, that looks, I mean, that looks more like, like White. It, it looks more, it looks more like Will I Am than Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> now you yeah, I mean, said it. It just does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, now you, you've kind of ruined. You, yeah, you've, you you've can't have a caricature of someone who doesn't look like the person that's being caricatured. I mean, you, they've got to they've got to instantly be that person, haven't they? In I your mean, mind, you can tell who that is, can't you? Yeah, I mean that's that's a good caricature of him. Um, that works. And the Lennon one works, and I guess a lot of them work, but it just doesn't. That's, yeah, kind of. It Elvis. doesn't work for, for Snoop Dogg. I'm not sure if this one works. This is a Celine Dion one. I mean, what are they thinking here? Just like E.T. Oh, it is E.T. <laughs> <laughs> you prat, honestly. 
<laughs> absolute, absolute pillock. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oh, that's almost up there with the quiz with Noel Edmonds and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Thing is, <laughs> in your brain there, you were looking at going. Trying to, trying to get could be was Celine trying, Dion. I was trying to get Celine Dion out of it, but I couldn't. <laughs> Do you know what I? Mean? <laughs> oh God! It was more like it was more like Mariah Carey than Celine Dion. <laughs> Do you know what that reminds me of? A few years ago, uh, I went out on a night out, and I had a tell one of my friends, James. <laughs> I had a T-shirt made up, and it and it had him on the on my T-shirt eating a burger, and I comically drew on it before I sent off a printing a set of gentleman luggage on the burger, so it looked like so. Um, and I wore it on this night out, and we we're in the bar. We we're been out for an hour or so, and somebody came up to me and looked at my T-shirt and went, "Is that him?" And I was like, "Yeah." And James looked at it and went, "Is that me?" I was like. James, you've looked at your reflection in the mirror for the past 32 years of your life. <laughs> Why are you even asking that question? Uh, Was it not a mirror image on your T-shirt, though? Is that what fooled him? Well, possibly, dude. All, he didn't all see I himself know. the way round he was used to seeing. Uh, I'm just waiting for um, Christmas round at Phil's house when he tees on. You're sat there and you're going, Celine Dion's so on. <laughs> 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 and everybody's going, Are you sure? It's <laughs> Celine Dion, trust me. I've yeah, been gonna, told. She touches hands with Elliot. My heart will go on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'll be right oh. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, oh, do you know what? That that was a, that, that was that was hilarious. Thank that you. That cannot Phil, be but... topped. So thank you, viewers. We we can't take that any further. So thanks for no. watching this uh Program all about 1992, into which we delved into 1992 in such depth. Join us for another one very soon. Thanks for watching.